Good morning. Well, now we know who the lively ones in the crowd are. The choir comes in and gets loud in here all of a sudden. The rest of us are sitting in here all quiet, but I, I do. I love to hear the chatter because it reminds me that we got people here, and hopefully we've got people joining us online from home as well because it's always good to worship together whether we're able to be here in person or worship uh, from home or elsewhere. I invite you to join with me in looking at our announcements. Uh, do keep in mind that our Wednesday night activities have resumed. Uh, please sign up uh, for uh, dinner in the Sunday school hallway if you plan on attending so we can have uh, accurate numbers for that. Now, Wednesday night includes a uh, Bible study for kids and youth and adults uh, as well as supper and choir practice, so keep that in mind. Uh, Coming up Saturday, the North Georgia Cruisers will be holding their cruise in at Dowdy Park. Uh, go out and support them. Most of you are aware of uh, them raising funds to bless kids in the community at Christmas. Um, they're a wonderful organization uh, that we've partnered with here at Horizon for uh, many Christmases now. So go out and support them. Those cruise ins are part of their fundraising effort. Uh, today, uh, this evening, uh, at the fair, uh, it's free admission for everybody. It's Faith Day at the fair, and starting at 5 o'clock uh, will be the Sunday singing at the fair. Uh, they've always got a, a lot of talent uh, there, and everyone is invited to come out and enjoy the singing. And then one for you to add to your calendar. Uh, I finally uh, got a date, but on September 15th, uh, during our Bible study time on Wednesday night, Missy ward Angala will be here joining us to uh, share with us about her um, ministry. Um, she is uh, one of the missionaries that, that we support here at Horizon, and uh, she is back stateside for an indefinite period of time, given the craziness of the world and wants to use the opportunity to come and visit as many churches as she can and share updates on her ministry there. Uh, so I do hope uh, that you will make plans to come out and hear her uh, that Wednesday night as well. Again, I'm glad that you have joined us this morning. Now, may we worship together. First you don't succeed, try, try again. May we stand for our opening hymn, Let Truth and Mercy Find Here.
Good morning. All right, so I have something for y'all this morning. I can open it up. Okay, so I gave you both, I gave you all two pieces of candy. Did y'all have to pay for them? No. No, I gave it to you freely, didn't I? Now, you have a choice what to do with that candy. I eat them. You <laughs> could eat both of them. You could eat one of them and share with someone else in the congregation. I could give them away. Or you could give both away. It's up to you. Um, so our passage today is all about sharing. Mm -hmm. In the book of Proverbs says this, The generous will always be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. This verse tells us that it's a blessing to share. Do you all share toys and stuff? Yeah, I got one cat. Mm -hmm. So you can choose to share it. Okay, so God wants us to share things that we have, and God wants us to share his love as well. God's love is freely given to us, right? Do we have to pay for God's love? No, who paid for God's love for us? Remember? Jesus. Jesus, who died on the cross for us. So this week, what I want you to do is I want you to find ways to share with others and to share God's love with others, okay? And eat them more. That could be that you could share with a friend at school or you could help your teacher out or if you have a new student, you can help welcome them into your group, right? God wants us to find ways to share with others and to share God's love. Can y'all do that this week? All right, let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for always loving us, and please help us to share our, your love with others. In your name we pray. Amen. Just give her the mic and be done with it. <laughs> no point in resisting. Our next hymn, our offertory hymn, is one you probably have never sung. No one has here today. <laughs> so we're going to be learning it together. Please stand as we sing, What Does the Lord Require of You? for the day that you've given us. We ask that you be with our, our men in service uh, that are in harm's way, that they will be delivered back to their loved ones uh, in the very near future. Uh, be with our church as it goes forward, that we will continue to be a living 
breathing light to this community and everyone will know exactly who we are and what we stand for. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. Please stand for the doxology. scripture reading this morning is a selection from Proverbs, Proverbs 22, verses 1 and 2, 8 and 9, and 22 and 23. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause, 
and the spoils of life those who despoil them.
children can head to kids time with Miss Cat. When Katie and I got married, the thing where women hyphenate their last name when they got married was becoming more and more common, as was women keeping their maiden name when they got married. And so I asked Katie, I'm like, are you interested in doing either of those things? And her answer was an absolute no. And I was like, well, why not, you know? And she's like, well, Flaw Harris sounds dumb, to be honest. And... Um, she had heard enough jokes about all of her flaws to last her a lifetime. In fact, uh, I think the only reason she said yes when I asked her to marry me is so she could ditch her last name and get a new one. So she said yes and has regretted it ever since. I jest, or at least I hope I jest. But I tell that story to, to make a point. There's a lot in our names. They matter, not just because of how they sound or how they fit together, but they represent our identity, where we come from, who we belong to, our reputation. All that gets attached to our name. It's the one thing that we've got. We're given it on our birth certificate when we're born, and then it's printed on our death certificate when we die, and everything that happens in between is associated with that name. It's the one thing that we've got that's with us from birth to the grave. Everything else falls away. Our name is ours. What becomes attached to that name is ours. We're stuck with it for better or worse. So we might as well make the most of it that we can. And today we start a new series titled The Good Life. And along the way, we're going to be talking about the things that make for a good life. And there is no better starting point for talking about living the good life than understanding the importance of having a good name. No, not necessarily our, our given name or our last name, but the, all that is associated with our name. And the Proverbs are a great place to start talking about that. As we heard in the very first one, a good name is worth more than anything else in the world. And Proverbs, being a collection of wisdom, offer a lot of wisdom on what it means to live a good life, to have a good name, whether it be in the form of poetry or hymns or stories. And in our verses today, we hear the wisdom writer tell us the importance of a good name, but we also heard some Proverbs that make up the foundation of having that good name. It's about making a name for yourself with a certain set of actions, a certain way of living, where regardless of what our name is, whether it be Harris or Flaw or Jingleheimer Schmidt, having a good name means what do people think about when they hear that name? And Proverbs tells us that the, the goal is to have people associate our name with a person of good character. That isn't fame or status. It isn't power or prestige, things our world is obsessed with. It isn't physical beauty or athleticism. It's not something that's generated by the good spin of a public relations guru. But a good name is something that is earned, according to the scriptures, by living in the Lord's way. And the Lord's ways often defy the logic of the world in which we live. God's ways are very frequently contradictory to the things that culture tells us we should prioritize. But none of those things that we culturally attach to our name matter to God. God is God of all. Whether you are homeless or a CEO, an American or an Afghani, or all points in between. God is your God. And social position has nothing to do with what kind of name we have before God. Who we are isn't defined by any worldly standard. 
We are all creatures created by God in the image of God to reflect and bear God in our lives. So our name then ought to reflect our heart, and our hearts ought to reflect Christ before and above everything else. And Proverbs offers us some good wisdom on how we go about doing that. It tells us in 22.8, and I paraphrase, what you do matters. You get back in life what you put into it. Your name is established by what you say and do. The person who commits injustice or is wicked will eventually come to disaster. What they have done in their life will eventually come back to haunt them. Their name will be mud. And whoever sows folly in their life winds trapped in their own ignorance and dare I say even stupidity. You get angry and lose yourself, lose control, it can haunt you. It brings failings. Proverbs tells us to have a good name. We have to avoid those things. And there's plenty of examples that I could give you, ranging from Main Street to Wall Street to D.C. to Hollywood and all points in between that demonstrate just how true this is. It's as true now as it was in the time of ancient Israel. Wisdom tells us that you want a good name. The first thing that you have to do is pay attention to what you're doing, what you're putting out there. And I would argue it probably even means more now than it did in ancient Israel because we have this wonderful yet terrible thing called the Internet. News of something you say or do here in Somerville can reach California and around the world faster than it would have made it to the next town over. In the ancient world. So what we say and do. Both in person and online. Matters. Because once it's out there. It's there forever. I don't know. If any of you are Jeopardy fans. It is going to be a near impossible task to fill Alex Trebek's shoes anyway, but the guy they picked, his name's out there, and then all of a sudden some not-so-good stuff that he said and did six, seven, eight years ago, whatever it was, floating around on the Internet, all of a sudden it resurfaces, and boom, he's out of the gig. What we do matters. It may not seem like it matters now, but in a technological age, it's going to matter forever. A good name then comes by being a blessing to others, 22.9. In contrast to putting negativity out there and doing wrong, when we put out positivity and we do good, that circulates, that builds a good name. And the individual depicted here in the Proverbs is giving all that he or she has to the needy and is blessed by that action. See, a good name is built one action at a time, one step at a time. It's something that is built, can, takes a lifetime to build, but can be torn down in a moment. But having a good name is having our name associated with things like kindness and blessing. Things that make life possible for both the giver and the recipient. Things that make our world a better place, not a worse one. Things that make a difference. We develop a good name when we are willing to look out for others, especially the vulnerable. The language employed in verses 22 and 23 regarding the city gate, if you aren't aware, in the ancient world, the city gate kind of served as like a courtroom. It was the gate, it was the hub of the community. It's where business transactions were handled. It's where legal transactions were handled. 
It was where anything of any importance in the community was handled. It, it would be kind of the equivalent of handling all of our legal and commercial business on the lawn of the courthouse. You would just gather around and someone would preside over the proceedings. So in this illustration in Proverbs, God is serving as both prosecutor and judge. God is saying when we come to the courtyard of life, what is the case against us? Will we be found as someone who doesn't care about the vulnerable, the exploited, the poor, those who are struggling? Or will we be found to be someone who cares and tries to make a difference? Because in ancient times, as now, those who are struggling are particularly vulnerable to being exploited, being victimized, being ostracized, being treated as less than. To have a good name is to be someone who doesn't do that. But rather someone who serves as a voice for the voiceless, someone who stands up for the vulnerable those who are enduring misfortune, those who are struggling, not kicking others when they're down or looking down upon them, but being someone who tries to pick others up. That is a good name when we can be known as someone who stands up for others. But you know, and here's the challenge and, and the problem and all that is it seems to me our world today operates on the complete exact opposite of that philosophy. Rather than being worried about building our own good name and living right, our world seems to operate on a system of it doesn't matter what you did as long as you can make the other person seem worse. Rather than building our own good name, it seems we'd rather tear down someone else's. Rather than worrying about what kind of people we are, we're tempted to just try to knock everybody else down. And that brings with it a lot of conflict and pain. The way we knock down other people and polarize ourselves into different camps is destructive. Plain and simple. It's not building a good name for yourself. Trying to ruin somebody else's good name, making somebody else to be the bad guy for your own advancement, that's not building a good name. It's being just as crooked as everybody else. Living life around the basis to get ahead that you've got to knock somebody else down a peg, is it just ain't healthy. It doesn't work. We can look all around us and fill in any illustration you want to, to see that it does not work. And if you can't think of a single place to look, look at Washington, D.C. If people would put half the energy into just being good people that they do and trying to demonize others, it would be a different world. And unfortunately, as followers of Christ, we aren't exempt from playing that game of getting caught up in that. We're just as likely to be tempted to climb on our own high horse and as Jesus put it, ignore the plank in our own eye to point out somebody else's splinter. And that divisiveness continues to permeate everything about our lives from our theological and political discourse to our economics, even our health care. What if we just once again focused on, you know, having a good name for ourselves? I mean, after all, a good reputation is of great value. 
those who seek to have one will find the way to living the good life. You know, we've only got one reputation, and if we ruin it, it's hard to fix it. You know, these Proverbs reminded me of something that someone wise like maybe Ben Franklin or Confucius or somebody would have said, or maybe even something pithy you'd find in a fortune cookie. But yet, as practical as they are, as important as they are, I've never seen any of these proverbs show up on like one of those motivational posters or a coffee mug or a bumper sticker. I mean, how would our lives be changed if we truly reminded ourselves of things like this? Like, what if we put a poster over our dining room table? Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Or if we were bold enough to put a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches on a bumper sticker and slap it on the back of our car. I don't know about you, but I'd be afraid to do it because I'd be afraid that I wouldn't live up to it. You know, we need to recapture this radical notion of self-examination, of having a good name, of following Jesus and his openness to serve and love. To serve and love even the most rejected, marginalized, and unclean people in our world. To lay aside partisan bickering over whatever. And just be good and do good. To think twice before we click share or post online. Maybe even think three times. You know, I've been accused more than once of opening my mouth before I think. Anybody else have that problem? Yeah, okay, leave me hanging out here to dry, it's fine. But the name we build for ourselves is a direct reflection of Jesus' name. If our name as Christians is going to be associated with Jesus, then we need to pay attention to what else our names get attached to. They ought to be associated with things like collaboration and cooperation, regardless of ideology or geography or economic status or the color of our skin or who we vote for. Establishing a name for ourselves by taking the hands of others Connecting with, understanding, seeing the image of God in one another, being willing to do things that we find uncomfortable for the benefit of others. Those are the kind of things that build a good name. Those are the things that bring healing and hope into the world. That's the kind of name that marks a good life. And builds a good world in which to live it. And if we put forth the effort, we may just discover that we are more intimately connected with God than ever before. And that our lives have more meaning and joy than we could ever have believed possible. That's certainly the promise of the gospel. It's certainly the promise of the scriptures. So what kind of name do we want to have? What kind of life do we want to live? God's hope for us is that both are good. Amen. Please stand for our hymn of response.
thank you for hearing our prayers, feeding us with your word, and encouraging us in our meeting together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people. In the power of your spirit and in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.